The best kept secret is Akron, a city on a hill that became a global production of innovation. People who dreamed and wanted better traveled to Akron city limits, then discovered a unique city. Many stories have been told about this small but big city. It's a hardworking city. Residing in neighborhoods built to preserve the history and growth of Akron, its legacy is highlighted by the streetlights. Curtains pulled back to show families at the dinner table, passing around wisdom and truth. A truth that is proven by how we treat our neighbor and overcome systems that work to keep us fenced in. In past and present lifetimes, Black families have stayed rooted in Akron like the trees that line Bloomfield Avenue. We are raising generations of Akronites that are reshaping the narrative. My name is Diane Johnson. And my name is Jerry Gould. And we are descendants from George Primes, and who Annabelle. came up here from, and Annabelle Primes, who came up here from Georgia, who migrated from Georgia. Well, my granddad, he worked at Firestone. And actually, when they came up here, uh, they came off of James Street. And, uh, I think from what I understand, a lot of them migrated on the south side. And it used to be, from what they explained, Tent City out in that area. But as, I don't know, uh, as things increased in the factory, it needed more help. And so more and more people migrated up and then they were able to buy homes. And from that area on James Street or Barry in that area there, they moved uh, to a house on Euclid. And at that time, we've always had boundaries. So that was like Fairline in a sense. You know, they had a house that was right off the park. You know? Right. It was called Sugar Hill back then. Yeah. Grandmother was a housewife. Uh, she did day work every now and then uh, to help out. But she basically was a homemaker. She was a real activist. She was uh, uh, involved with her church. She was an excellent Sunday school teacher. Her classroom would be packed. Um, she was a member of Sydney Missionary Baptist Church right there on the corner of Raymond Street. And um, she also um, had missionaries from Africa in her home. She was just a real hostess. And um, she was very involved with the community. As Akron, um, as a place to live, it's the best kept secret as far as I'm concerned. Now, Akron has been a unique place. Uh, from what I can remember back in the 50s and 60s, uh, things started to change quite a bit, you know, especially uh, um, wealth-wise as far as the pay mm -hmm. that people were getting. People worked in a lot of different places. You know, they worked um, Pittsburgh plate glass, the hospitals, the factories. So uh, it was plentiful back then. Yeah, it was plentiful. And then Akron, as my sister said, is the best kept secret as far as affordable living. Mm -hmm. And then we went through that crisis of losing our jobs for the factories outsourcing the work and all of these factories shut down. But Akron still, Time they came me. from poverty. Right. And when you came to Akron, you got real jobs. Right. Okay. So wasn't nobody really trying to go back down South at that time. Mm -hmm. Everything from South was coming up, you know, mm -hmm. they migrating to Akron, Detroit, and any places where there was work. And then people were reaching back. Bring Real age, yeah. booming at the time. So um, so even for Akron to be a part of that, um, the rubber companies were offering good money. You know, when we came out of high school, 
uh, buying homes. We were buying homes. Cars? We were buying cars, brand new cars at 19, 20, 21 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, by the industry leaving, I wouldn't be who I am today if, if I hadn't lost my job at Firestone because it made me become a creative artist in my mm -hmm. own way of being able to take it. Force other brothers and sisters to become firemen, nurses, all kind of things that they thought they would never be because of the factories leaving. It pushed them to Into get an education. Years, yeah. yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, to grow. So we had the chief of police was black and so many others, you know, Ed Parms and so many other people, dentists and doctors that came out of this adversity because at one while people thought, and even I thought that I would have to retire from Firestone. I didn't have no regrets for that, but again, uh, adversity send you into areas that you didn't think that you even had the knowledge to do. But with God, you made in his image. Right. And in his image, there's no end to your thinking ability. And you cannot let man place a uh, uh, set an area in your life that you can't reach. You work hard. You learn to appreciate what you have. And you stick to your core values. And so we weren't allowed to sit around and do nothing. We weren't allowed to sit around and... Um, not have some type of summer jobs, uh, take a class. My mother always had us in some type of creative class, whether it was typing, jujitsu, sewing. We had sewing classes because my grandmother, mm -hmm. she was a seamstress and she sewed, she made rag rugs, she made quilts. Mm -hmm. She, she really quilted. And, um, so we, we didn't have that option to just sit around and do nothing. And I even have that for my kids today. You're just not going to sit around and do nothing. You're going to be in something. You're going to stay motivated. And um, they just taught us you just don't quit. People culture, will love you know? what you have, not because you're black, because you're good at it. Yes. And that's the key. Life is competitive. And you got to be competitive with it. And you always have to look at somebody better than you to grow. Mm -hmm. If you patting yourself on the back, you already stopped growing. Yes. You have to let society push. Dr. Martin Luther King spoke one day about a mouse trap. And he said that if you could build a mouse trap, and even if you had to build it in the wilderness, if you build it well enough, people will soon be the path to your place. Mm -hmm. So I've always took that example of always looking at people greater, better. And even if the distance is like this, if you keep working at it daily, you're gonna see it close. And I, I just believe whatever you do, um, God will make the way. My name is Howard Pippin, and I am a United Methodist pastor, and I am also an artistic director of Genesis Experience Theater here in Akron. I'm Ashley Pippin, and I am the executive director at Genesis Experience Theater. My uh, career in the United Methodist Church actually brought me to Akron uh, because they moved the pastors around from church to church. Um, this is my second time uh, serving as a pastor in Akron. When I was here before, I was single. Coming back, I'm married and I had kids and I was really excited because um, I knew it would be a great place uh, to raise a family. I have a degree in theater. I love, I've always loved theater. Um, uh, worked as a prof professional actor in DC for a year after I graduated. Um, and the, the theater really comes out of uh, our marriage. When we met, we were, you know, we had that in common. 
that love of God, love of the arts, love of theater. And so primarily I focus on what shows the theater is going to be doing, um, how, how curriculum is going to be taught. Being married to the executive director, I play a supportive role in that uh, <laughs> massive uh, job at, uh, that my wife has of actually running the theater, uh, getting the grants and all that stuff. So I'll, I'll let her share that part. I, I'm just the creative pretty boy of the operation. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to say what he always says. Like, I just do whatever Ashley tells me. Well, and then I do that too. (laughs) Um, I love Genesis because Genesis is faith. Genesis is God. Genesis um, incorporates just all of who God is. Um, We also include everyone. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when I say everyone, I mean everyone of any, any faith, any community, when we moved, I was eight and a half months pregnant with him. And I was terrified because I've never lived anyone anywhere else besides Cleveland. And I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know where nothing was. I had no friends near. My daughter had a new school, was getting a new brother, a new church. I was terrified. But then um, when I started talking to people and people were inviting, and they were really, really nice. I was like, oh, I think I like this spot. The people are nice here. Like, this is cool. Like, um, so I just began to love it. That's, it surprised me. But I think making Akron our forever home is what we decided as a family. And I'm, I'm really excited about that. Our hopes, well, I'll speak for my, my hope is that um, we will uh, change people's lives. Um, that we will inspire people um, to get excited about the arts, um, that we will inspire people to get excited about their, their, their faith um, and, and, you know, taking care of themselves. I mean, that's, that's really who we are as people, uh, not only in Genesis, but, you know, my work as, you know, a United Methodist pastor um, and, and, and as a family, we want our legacy to be that, that, you know, years from now, people will still be talking about Genesis Experience Theater. My name is Charlie Denise Harris. I am the creative director for the East Avenue Market and Galleries, and I also work as a tire tech for So Fresh Use Auto Sales, which is our family's uh, car dealership. And hi, my name is Jacqueline Cleo Harris. I'm a resident of Akron, Ohio, and I'm the owner of all the things that she just said, the art gallery, the used car dealership owner operator. When I turned 17, I was in high school still about to graduate, and my parents had always encouraged us. Uh, even though I went to a vocational high school to still go to college and I chose Akron University. It seemed that it had more opportunities uh, for African-American women at that time. So when I, I went to college, I saw that I could, you know, get a job and get into more things at that time. Whereas for me at, at growing up in the city I grew up in when I didn't see any opportunities for me. So I um, took business management and child development and I had a double major. And I, um, at about 21, I got married and my husband was an entrepreneur. He had all these businesses and he was like, we can do this together. So through that course of life, living together and implanting in our children, the need to work at what they do, the need that, you know, you can be your own boss. You know, my husband would always say, you know, you ain't gotta always work for the man, you can be the man. So uh, with that backing and them growing up around it and making them work, that's why we're able to do it now. And we were always able to get along as a family. We had Christian standards that we applied ourselves and then we applied to our children. My parents' hopes, I don't know, I think our parents just hoped that we were happy and healthy no matter where we were. 
Um, obviously, the focus of staying here in Akron is because you have that opportunity uh, to work as that family union unit as opposed to being separated. So I don't think they ever said or reinforced the need to have to stay, but what they provided here is something that I wouldn't be able to have had I went somewhere else. You know, I'm able to have an art gallery. <laughs> I don't know if I would have been able to have that capital to do it in New York or LA. Not that it can't be done, but I think what they provided is those opportunities and, and that structure. And uh, Akron has provided that for our children because they are, they were and able to continue to be entrepreneurs, to work at something without being stopped in any other way. There are a lot of opportunities in Akron. And to having an art gallery uh, that, you know, is something that we don't see. But I see a lot in Akron. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something that we don't see. It's black owned. It's 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 going towards uh, black art in in Akron and in the local local creative uh, small businesses of Akron. So because of that, but our children have made us proud. So it was a blessing for me to come here, meet my husband, have our children, have our business in Akron. I think I'm most proud of. My, my black heritage, um, all the strong black women before me who passed down these great nougats of how to be entrepreneurs. My grandma was an entrepreneur too. Um, and she instilled so much into my mom. And even though I never met her, I still feel like I know her um, through my mom and just all those great things that they, they've passed down to us. My father, Clinton Lee Sims, came from Georgia with the aspiration and the gusto to make his life better. He really wanted to be a good man for his, father, for his family. Then he came to Akron, and in Akron he lived in my great-great-grandmother's boarding house, which is located on the corner of Miller and Bowery. So at the time, he met my mother, which is her grandmother. They had six kids, yes. um, six kids. And what I found out looking up um, information was he was a pastor at Shiloh um, Missionary Baptist Church um, where he got ordained in 1952. Um, and then from there, he just ministered at different churches. Antioch Baptist Church, he um, preached at. Um, and then I found out that um, he had farm talent, so he would build houses, build churches. Um, he built a couple buildings around here and a church. Several buildings, and he also built um, graves, uh, tombs for the uh, deceased. Because uh, one day he was in the backyard. We were living on Livingston Street then, which is street right behind Akron General. He uh, was out there building this this casket, this wooden casket. And I thought he was making me a go-kart for the race. <laughs> I just remember that story. I mean, it's just something touching. And he said, no, nah. nah, dear, this is for the deceased. And so there are plenty of graves over in the cemetery that he had built caskets for back in the day. And he also had a bike shop. And not too far from here, he had help with the gold, um, and places that he had built and raised just like when I work and I, I work in healthcare and I run across a lot of the Akron finest as they call them who helped build. And I'm just thinking my father helped build some of these things too without even realizing how much in fact. So I did a little history and found out that um, he was just as great as those I were taking care of. We're grateful. That's all I can say, that we're grateful for what we have and what we have accomplished. We just all, we just take what we know and just pass it on. I think I take more pride knowing where I came from now um, than before because, I mean, you hear little bits and pieces, you know, when you have fa family gatherings. 
Um, but when I did my research and see how prideful from my grandmother to my granddad was and how hard they worked to move around Georgia, to come up to Ohio, to build stuff, um, I'm very happy and pr I'm excited to find out more information to see, like, my family really put a mark in Akron and we just don't know how deep it go, but it goes somewhere and I don't think it's going to stop. So I'm very excited and just especially for my children and their children and generations to come to know, like, you know, maybe Akron is a stumping ground for us to build something positive for the community to see, hey, the Sims made their mark, the Johnsons can make their mark, everybody can make their mark and be prideful right. for what they're doing for their community. Akron is home to me because of uh, what it had offered me when I was growing up, what I could do, what my father and mother had taught me to do you know, get a good education, do the best you can with what you have, and you go far. And I felt as though I've done that because places that I have gone, things I have seen, and artwork that I've worked on, gardening, sewing, that all has been a, a good help to me to make me say, well, this is Akron. Akron is home to me because I feel like um, it's family, you know, um, it's a good place to raise your kids. Um, the education, you make your own education for your kids and the jobs here are good and I just, I love it. For me, family is coming together on one accord, knowing where your heritage is, knowing that you can make it when you don't think you can make it because family is there with a connection of love, understanding, peace, harmony, and goodwill. I am the Vice President of Marketing and Corporate and Community Engagement at United Way of Summit in Medina. I am also on the marketing committee for Project Grad Akron. I am also on the Highland Square Neighborhood Association, and I am on the planning committee for Porch Rocker every year. I moved to Akron. I was living in Macon, Georgia at the time, and um, I had, you know, run the gamut of things. Like I was in tech and doing um, database programming. And over time, I kind of got bored with kind of the corporate life and, and working in a cubicle every day. And also the work being something that wasn't necessarily helping, it was just making money. And I eventually quit and became a DJ and a bartender, which led me into this whole other world of arts. And I began to write, which was something that I enjoyed. So I wrote for a newspaper for a little while. I did a morning news talk show for a little while. And I was also involved in Georgia Public Broadcasting, helping them do a radio segment. And I had so much fun doing all that. But what I realized was that I was starting to build this resume in marketing. I had a friend who had already moved to Akron and he was constantly telling me like, hey, you know, Akron is this cool city. There's a bunch of interesting things going on. You should come check it out. He had two businesses. One of them was something that he was trying to get off the ground. It was a subscription box. Um, and the idea was that it would, the subscription box would be all about Akron. And he was like, would you be interested in that? You could come shape it. And that's what got me here. I was like, this sounds interesting. This would be my way to meet new people and kind of understand what's going on in the city. So I came up and helped him start Unbox Akron. This was in 2015. So things were starting to bubble. And then for people who had left and moved away and missed home, this was a way for us to say, hey, there's something special happening in Akron. This is what you should know about. So that was how I got to Akron and what kind of drew me into the city. I, I met great people and I'm still meeting great people. Like Akron is just full of really great people. A lot of talented people, a lot of really friendly folks, a lot of people who don't mind pitching in and helping you when you want to work on something. People who don't mind introducing you to someone that they know. Like people are very friendly uh, one word that i heard a lot when i first got here was collaborative the city is collaborative and 
I found that to be true from my perspective. I was able to, maybe I was lucky in terms of the people that I met. I met the right people when I got here and that became the circle of people that I'm around. But I found a lot of people who were just kind of willing to be passionate about something and willing to work on that passion and willing to let you help them and willing to help you. And that goes a long way with staying here. Not to mention, there's a lot of great art. That's right. Really great music. There's just fun stuff happening in the city and it's small enough that you can meet the right people, but yet it's still big enough that you can have enough people join in on you to make it worthwhile. The best kept secret is Akron, a city on a hill that became a global production of innovation. People who dreamed and wanted better travel to Akron city limits then discovered a unique city. Many stories have been told about this small but big city. It's a hardworking city. Residing in neighborhoods built to preserve the history and growth of Akron, its legacy is highlighted by the streetlights. Curtains pulled back to show families at the dinner table, passing around wisdom and truth. A truth that is proven by how we treat our neighbor and overcome systems that work to keep us fenced in. In past and present lifetimes, black families have stayed rooted in Akron like the trees that line Bloomfield Avenue. We are raising generations of Akronites that are reshaping the narrative.